Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Nile Cruise. I'm Ahmed Nader and today I will be partnered by Dina Hussain. Hello Dina. Hello Ahmed. Uh, welcome to all our viewers who are going to be joining us in this edition of Nile Cruise. And before we start off, let me extend or let us extend our deepest condolences to all the Christian Egyptians who uh, have undergone losses and uh, a lot of anger and a lot of uh, uh, bad incidents that have happened uh, according to the attacks of the cathedral. We extend our deepest condolences to our brothers and uh, the, all the Egyptian uh, citizens are very sad to share the loss with, uh, with our brothers, the Christian uh, citizens. And we're going to start off uh, uh, this edition of uh, the Nile Cruise uh, uh, with uh, lots of uh, segments, yes. of course, Ahmed. Yes. Uh, so don't forget to follow us on Nile Cruise on Nile TV on Google Plus, Facebook and Twitter and of course YouTube. Thank you for watching and stay tuned. Stay with us. حسن بقيمة والأمل موضة قديمة بس في ثانية افتكرنا إن بلدنا دي عظيمة ارفع راسك انت مصري انت واحد من اللي نزلوا في الميدان اسمعكو ارفع راسك انت مصري انت وقفت جنب جارك في اللي جان ارفع راسك انت مصري انت رجعت المصر بتاع زمان المصر بتاع زمان Welcome back, you're still watching Nile Cruise. In Egypt nowadays, uh, there seems to be a lot of less of what the Egyptians call the lightness of blood. The easygoing Bonomi, for which in one of these stereotypes with a large grain of truth, uh, the country is renowned for. The quick-witted uh, jocularity is diminished, the laughter is muted, and instead, everywhere you turn, there is a palpable sense of frustration, of being weighed down. And to talk to us more about the, uh, these feelings in the Egyptian streets nowadays is Mr. Hossam Eddin Fahmi, the human development expert. Hello, Mr. Hossam. Hello. Hello, Mr. Fahmi. Uh, let's first talk about how do you justify this prevailing sense of uh, frustration among the Egyptian citizens after such a graceful revolution? Yeah. F uh, first of all, let's, uh, let's look at the whole picture now. People uh, who had this uh, revolution and made um, a great effort to change the country and change the situation, the political situation and the economic situation, had great expectations af after the revolutions. They wanted uh, justice, they wanted uh, uh, better economic conditions, they wanted lots of things. Mm. So their, their expectations were so high and the, the result is so low be, be below their expectations. So this, this sense of frustration is, uh, is normal mm. and it, it's accepted to, to have this frustration because the more you put fr uh, higher expectations for uh, whatever it is, the, the, the higher the percentage of frustration. So this is, ac uh, this is accepted, this is expected actually. And um, the thing that we need to, 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 to deal with now is how to deal with this frustration 
in the macro level and the micro level. I mean, the macro level for the company, for the for the for the country, for the government, how to deal with this, and for the individuals, for the citizens. I think from the macro level, I'm talking about uh, the government, the need to put in action some of the agendas that they, they, they promised the, the, the Egyptian citizens about. They, they talked about uh, freedom, of, uh, they, they talked about uh, the traffic, uh, they talked about uh, bread, they talked about the, the economic crisis. conditions, many things. Nothing of these things were tangible to, to the normal Egyptian citizen or to anyone can, cannot see this. So we need to put this into action. And from, from citizens, from, uh, from us, we need to uh, work in collaborations with, uh, with uh, some of the parties that are involved uh, in this uh, revolution or the, in the political situation in order to find out how can we come out with implemented solutions, practical solutions in order to uh, uh, in order for the country and for the citizens to be in better conditions and uh, but Mr. Hossam, uh, maybe you've seen uh, the frustration of the Egyptians even before the revolution the, yeah. the revolution has erupted in 2011 and we've seen uh, the sense of frustration since maybe 2008 or 2007 even in the era of the former revolution uh, the former uh, regime of the toppled regime yeah. do you think that the Egyptians as a whole have changed during the past years, maybe the, during the past five years? The change that I've seen is not positive. Mm -hmm. I mean, the change in attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, the revolution had, had uh, good aspects, uh, had, had good, uh, um, uh, what, what, I can, what I should say, good uh, indications, good, good potential. Uh, potential. Mm -hmm. But what I don't uh, like uh, I, what I what I can see now is the lack of respect, mm -hmm. the lack of communication between people now, the judging. Uh, uh, people now tend to judge you before even y uh, no you talk, you. and they, li they don't listen enough. So people now lack communication, lack the frame of respect, and and. And it's at, and it is uh, used as if it's uh, this is freedom. Mm -hmm. This is not freedom. The freedom that we were looking for is not like that. We were looking for mutual respect, understandings, working together, collaborations. This is not any more evident. Before the revolution, the 25th uh, January, people were all together mm -hmm. in Tahrir Square. In spite of their differences, religion, uh, ideas, ideologies, they were all together united in one idea. They want the best for the country. And after that, we are splitted. Everyone wants to be the dominant party. Everyone wants uh, thinks that he's the right, uh, the right one in order to to uh, to, to participate or to uh, to lead the change. We lack this. This is what we need to work on. Right, Mr. Fahmi, uh, as Ahmed said that uh, in the former regime, people felt anger and oppression and fed up. Now we had a revolution and we toppled that former regime and we ended up with the same frustration add to that extremism yeah. and polariz polarization yes. and um, not accepting each other, uh, sectarian violence. Uh, there yeah. were lots of other complicated uh, problems. From where do you think that came, uh, that spirit came, emerged? And how could we regain our own good spirit, Egyptian spirit again, do you think? Yeah. That's a very good question. Let's analyze the situation now after uh, what happened. I think this came from, as I said, the high, the high expectations that people expected from the new president, from the new regime, from the, the things that they were promised they will see and the second thing it came from people attitude toward this change mm. not listening to each other uh, not communicating uh, judging labeling 
so much emotions and uh, awfulizing. So this is one of the things, attitude, people who are not prepared. And the most important reason, I think, people were not un united in a, in a leader. They were united uh, and, uh, and worked together because of an idea, freedom, justice. But they did not unite in who will lead the country. So now there are many parties con uh, arguing and uh, everyone is uh, shooting at the other one. You are right, uh, you are wrong, you, were, uh, you are not the right person or, or whatever. The problem is we don't have the idea of a united le leader a visionary person to take the, the country to the next step. This is, is not there. This is the main problem. We need a, a leader, a visionary leader who sees the potential in people and the country. What will the feeling uh, of the Egyptians, of course, will, will sense the, uh, the feeling of frustration and yeah. being fed up and angered, of course, with the new uh, circumstances and, of course, the old circumstances as well. Uh, will this be able to change in the coming years or will be the Egyptians just resisting change, will be just frustrated as usual in the, in the past five years? Well, I hope so, but this will not be an easy task. I think the, 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 the country, uh, the government, need to work on this together with all parties, all the political parties should work together. We need to listen to each other. We need to work in collaboration as teams. We have one vision. We have one country. We're living. We should not uh, focus on the differences. We should focus now on the, the, the similarities, what we want from this country. So in order to work together for the best uh, for this country, mm -hmm. people, citizens, need to uh, join the, the parties and play an active role the parliament should have a role the government should have a role and they should work together and listen to each other if we listen we seek to understand the other the other side the other point of view and embrace and let's work together this will be very very uh, effective and this will lead the country to